Hello everyone, Kumusta? Welcome to Bisaya 24-7, your official Cebuano English tutorial on the web. I'm so excited because I'm back with another tutorial for all of you who are pursuing um, learning and understanding the Cebuano and uh, Visayan dialect. Uh, before we continue, I would like to ask all of you to please um, subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And also, if you like this video, uh, please click on the like button. If you also feel that you have some friends or family who can take advantage of this tutorial, uh, feel free to share it to them. Uh, for those of you who are looking for a reference for uh, learning the Cebuano and or Visayan dialect, we do have our uh, official release of a Cebuano tutorial, which is available on Kindle and in paperback uh, from all global Amazon marketplaces. So um, check them out and um, I'm going to see you on the other side. Hi guys, today we are covering a lesson number seven and uh, this lesson is about expressing orientation, direction, um, relative geolocation, and perhaps something to do with, you know, movement or motion. Um, so let's start with the very basic ones. Um, we have left or right. How do you say left? Uh, you say, voila. Um, for those of you who have um, studied or have gone through the previous lessons, you might be wondering, voila. Um, there's a word, uh, voila, which means none. Um, there's a difference when you say left, that's voila, voila. If you say none, that's voila. So there's a glottal end to none, voila. Ah. But when you say left, it's just voila. And how do you say right? To o. So when you say left, wala, or right, tuo. Sa wala or sa tuo. To the left or to the right. So if I say left hand, a hand is kamot. Wala nga kamot. Or walang Kamot. But uh, we usually just say wala nga kamot. Right hand tuo nga kamot or tuong kamot. Wala nga kamot, tuo nga kamot. Walang kamot, tuong kamot. Left side sa wala nga bahin. Right side, sa tuo nga bahin. So if you notice, um, nga bahin, it points to a division or a point or a location. So bahin uh, simply means that portion or that side or that section. Um, so, when you say left side of, say left side of the building, sa wala nga bahin sa building, right side of the mountain, sa tuo nga bahin sa bukid. So, 
usually when you use direction, you point to that direction by starting with sa. So the sa is the pointer. Let's continue with um, more of the basic words that are translated, which references direction. And um, now let's have front or back. When you say front, that's translated to atubang or atubangan. And when you say back, or the rear, you say likud. So salikud, or some people would also use luyu. So whether you say likud or luyu, that represents the rear portion or the rear side. So take as an example, front door. That uh, translates to atubangan nga pultahan, or some people call it portahan, or some people also say puerta. Um, that's basically a Spanish word. If you say back door, you know, that's luyo nga pultahan, or luyo nga puerta. Um, same as the previous example, if you say front side, so that's atubangan nga bahin, or sa atubangan nga bahin. The back side or the rear side, you can just say sa likod nga bahin. Now let's continue with more. And we have up or down. How do we say up and how do we say down? When we say up, we just say taas. So if I point to up, I would just say sa taas. Um, there's a word which is spelled the same way yet um, it connotes a different meaning. And it's also um, the stressing of the word when you pronounce it is different. So taas means up, but if I say taas, that means long or tall. So just take note of that. Taas, up, taas, long, or taas, tall. How do we say down? Obos. So to specify sa obos. Now, if I say going up or going down, so the words taas and obos are still there, yet um, we use a different prefix, which is pa. Pa taas, pa obos. Um, the pa here is used uh, to describe movement. So this is basically describing the direction of the mo uh, movement that is going up, pataas, going down, paobos. Then we have upstairs and downstairs. If we translate the word stairs, that would be hagdan, hagdan. So if I say upstairs, that would be translated to sa taas sa hagdan. If I say downstairs, that translates to sa obos sa hagdan. 
Now let us say um, we just uh, specify the house. So sometimes we don't say hagdan in a way because um, we refer to the house as a whole. So it's as if we are partitioning the house into two sections. Thus, if I say upstairs, I mean, you know, the upper portion of the house. So we can now translate that to sa taas nga bahin sa balay. Balay is house. Likewise, if we say downstairs, we mean uh, the lower partition of the house. So uh, we just imagine that we have sta a, sta a set of stairs or a staircase in between that separates these two partitions. So you might be wondering why people sometimes would just say, oh, um, get it from downstairs. And they would say, kuha asa ubus nga bahin sa balay. We don't necessarily have to say hagdan. Um, this time we have go uphill or go downhill. Um, hill is bungtod in Bisaya or Cebuano. Um, when you say go uphill, you're um, designating designating rather a direction. So that would be um, using now the word again, uh, rather the prefix pa. So we have pasaka or paangat. Saka is climb. Angat is to attempt to overcome something like a hump or a mound. So it's basically um, visualizing, you know, the, the whole going uphill thing. Pasaka, you're climbing, or paangat, that's um, trying to overcome a hump. So you're you don't necessarily say pataas sa bungtod or paubos sa bungtod to go downhill. Though the aim is the same, you know, eventually after you go uphill, you'll be on top of the hill, which is already the portion that we call taas. Or when you go downhill, you'll eventually end up in the bottom part of the hill, which is also considered obus. So sometimes, I would just like to point this out that sometimes um, the way we use it doesn't have to be literal in a way. The way these words are used are not um, necessarily translated literally. And these things, of course, um, just don't get confused. It's a matter of um, getting used to how these words are spoken by the locals. So it's, it's really no big deal. Now let's have um, top or bottom. How do we translate top? We say ibabaw. And then for the bottom, ilawum. Ilawum. So if I say on top of the table, sa ibabaw sa la mesa. Table, la mesa. What about in the bottom of the ocean or at the bottom of the ocean? Sa ilam sa 
kadagatan. And um, sometimes, uh, maybe some people would say, sa kinailadman, sa kadagatan. So that translates to like the, the deepest portion of the ocean. Top area and uh, bottom area. Just like the previous examples that we've had, um, again, we are using bahin. So once you see the word bahin, it is basically, you know, a portion or a side or a section. And um, here, top area, ibabaw nga bahin. Bottom area, ilaw nga bahin. So I think um, these phrases are rather self-explanatory at this point since they have been um, just a repetition of uh, the previous examples. Um, how about inside or outside? In or out? So inside, sa sulud, or some people would shorten it by saying sud. So when you say sa sud or sa sulud, that means inside. And then outside, sa gawas. Um, if you say in, you can also say sa sulud, out. Sagawas. Um, inside my heart. Heart is kasing kasing. My, ako, nga. So this one is my heart, akong kasing kasing. Inside. Sa sulod, sa akong kasing kasing. Outside the house. House, balay, or some people say, by. Outside the house, sa gawas, sa balay. Um, finally, we have our relative positions. So, most of these um, words would be able to cover the relative positions. Um, if there's anything that I've missed, uh, feel free to uh, write your comments or questions in the comment uh, section. Uh, middle, um, you say sa tunga or um, some people would also say sa taliwala. So in the middle or in the core, that's satunga, sa taliwala. What about on the side? So it's not in the middle, it's on the side. So if you imagine um, a circle and you put a dot in the middle, that portion right in the middle, that's uh, satunga. And anything that's on the side, that's sakilid. Beside the. So if you are describing something, like putting something or seeing something beside something, so that's beside the, let us say, beside the aparador. So you can just say, sa tapad, sa, and then aparador. Uh, beside the window. 
sa tapad sa bintana. So, beside the, sa tapad sa. Behind the, or behind the. Um, sa likod sa. So, again, the same usage as beside the. You can just fill it in with um, the object, the relative object, or, you know, relative location. Within, um, so this would uh, reference the core. So the translation is sa ilaw, which if you recall, would signify the bottom, or sa sulod, which signifies um, that uh, portion inside something that's on the inside so that's how you express within sa ilam or sa sulud um, at the innermost part sa kinauyukan nga bahin so just in case um, you might hear this expression sa kinauyukan nga bahin the meaning of that is at the innermost part at the innermost portion or you can just say at the core so that's uh, what it means when you hear this phrase sa kinauyukan nga bahin At the tip, at the end, or maybe you can say at the edge. So that would be sa tumoy. So just imagine sa tumoy is any like end portion of something, the tip portion of something, like you know the tip of a pencil. So, if I say at the tip of this pencil, or the tip of this pencil, then that is sa tumoy sa lapis. Pencil is lapis. Um, on the edge, sa kiliran nga bahin. So um, this one, the edge, this would be similar to um, probably the skirt or the side. So it's, it's just bordering the edges. Um, the kiliran here is derived from kilid. So, which is um, translated as the side. So, it's on the side, sakilid. It's on the edge, sakiliran nga bahin. Again, we are designating um, nga bahin, which means the side, you know, the, the side portion or the side section or the side area on the edge. Uh, just don't um, confuse yourselves with um, some of these terminologies. Um, you might not uh, get to use them, but at least you know when you hear these expressions being used, then you know you can always remember these uh, relative positions and um, at least be able to. Uh, get to understand what they mean. So, um, I almost uh, forgot about this. 
uh, we have the directions east, west, north, south. So these are basic um, translations. Um, if you are, let us say, a traveler and you're going by direction, and let us just say that you're asking for specific directions. You can just say east, west, north, and then south. Uh, that's easier because um, I know for a fact that nowadays there's only a few people who possibly use the translation which is, you know, this word, Sidlakan, Kasadpan, Amihanan, Habagatan. Though um, I do recall that back home, uh, my father would use to tell me um, the, the season of the year because th th there are um, monsoon winds that, that come at a certain time of the year. And my my father would reference um, the, the directions, so it's the direction of you know wh well, which side is this wind coming from. So there's a mihanan and there's habagatan. So my father would just say, oh, it's a mihan time or it's habagat time. So basically what he was telling me was just uh, where these winds are coming from. But um, again, just to emphasize, if you want to ask directions, it is fair enough to just say east, west, north, and south. And then one more thing, um, most people, I mean the locals, Cebuano or you know the Visayan people most of us uh, we rarely reference um, east west north south we just we simply just point you know the directions either you know you go this way go that way or go the other way go left go right go straight go back um, it's it's not uncommon that we never use this um, exact directions relative to the poles. So again, if you say northern side, southern side, you know already that it's you know a portion or that section so you can just say amihanan nya bahin habagatan nya bahin i would not worry about it though um say we translate this one west of the moon so that's just moon is buwan or bulan uh, depending on you know if you're in Cebu you'll probably say buwan if you're in Mindanao you'll probably say bulan so that simply translates to kasa kasad pansa buwan east of the sun um, sun is adlaw sa amihanan sa adlaw um, this examples, I love this, um, like references. Uh, they're kind of poetic in a way. West of the moon, east of the sun. So if you ask me where I, where am I right now, I'd say, well, I'm at the west of the moon and east of the sun. Um, how do we say stop, go, turn, continue? 
Now I'm putting this here because sometimes you'd be traveling yeah, even on foot, you know, even if you're not, say, driving. And let us just say you're going with a group of people. So at least, you know, learn how to say stop or to go or to turn or to continue. So when you say stop, you can just say Huno. Go larga. So this has some kind of a Spanish connotation. Larga. Um, turn. Liko. So again, there's a glottal stop. Liko. If you say turn to the left or turn to the right. So if I say turn to the left, liko sa wala. Turn to the right, liko sa tuo. Um, continue or keep going. To keep going. You just say padayon, you know. If you you want to say, oh, we're, we're continuing with this um, journey, you just say, padayon, padayon sa lakao. Um, it's a way of saying, oh, we're not stopping. So, we will keep on going. So, you just say, padayon. Um, stop at the corner. Stop is hunung. Or if you are in Cebu, um, the more common term that is being used is lugar. So hunung, lugar, stop. Um, I think I've I've discussed this previously. But um, just as a reminder, yeah, you can either say hunung, um, the corner is iskina or kanto. So you can either say hunung sa iskina, hunung sa kanto. That means the same thing, stop at the corner. Or you can also say lugar, lugar sa iskina or lugar lang sa kanto. You know, same thing. Stop at the corner. Um, go straight. So if, let us say you're asking for a direction. You know, you, you ask a local. Because um, you're trying to figure out whether you proceed or you make a turn. So if... Somebody would tell you, derecho, derecho lang. That means, you know, just go straight. You know, whatever direction you're going, just follow through that direction. Don't turn. That is what is meant by derecho. Or you can, they, all, they might also say, padayon sa unahan. Unahan is, it's like further further down or down the road so continue down the road padayon sa unahan turn left again liko sa wala turn around <laughs> tuyok motuyok that means you have to go around. So if you, if let us say there's a roundabout, you have to go through a roundabout or a circular, you know, circular road or a circular area and you have to go around that area. That is toyuk. So, to go around, to turn around, 
you can just say toyok. Um, come back. You know. Um, again, I'm mentioning this uh, with reference to motion, movement. So direction. If you want somebody to proceed and then come back, then you can just say balik dinhi. So where do you want that person to, to come back? Here. So you have a reference point. Dinhi or ngari that is here. So come back here. So you can just say balik dinhi or you can also say balik ngari. Um, finally, we'll have this example. Let's see if we can translate this phrase. So let me just read it to you. Which way should I go? If I turn to the left and go uphill, right in the middle is my paradise, the place I call home. So let's have the translation. Which way? So you're asking which asa nga dalan? A way is like uh, the path or the road, and we translate to dalan. Dalan is path, pathway, road or simply way. So which way? Asangadalan. Should I go? Um, it's a um, question. Uh, to go. Should go. So you are still going. You're still about to go. We represent it by mupa uh, dolung. Padulung is to go a certain way. Mu padulung, you are still about to to go that way. Should I go? Ako I mu padulung. So I hope you know you don't confuse yourselves with this because it's kind of tricky if you you take it literally. If, you know, if can be expressed as kon for some people, and some people would also like to say kong. So either way, you can say kon or kong, it doesn't matter. Again, I, ako, turn to the left. So muliko sa wala. And og. Go uphill. Mupataas sa bungtod. Remember the translation that I gave earlier. Moksaka. Mukatkat. Right in the middle. Now, for this one. We have um, taliwala. You can either say taliwala for middle or uh, tunga. So right in the middle, it's just a figurative way of saying with certainty that you know it's it's undeniable. It's right there. So that's why I'm, I inserted the word mismo. Mismo. It's a Spanish word. So there is certainty in your expression that it's, that it's right there, right in the middle. So mismo sa taliwala or mismo sa tunga is mao. 
uh, my paradise. Paradise, paraiso. Akong paraiso, my paradise. The place, place is lugar. Um, the place, ang lugar. I call. Ako nga gitawag nga. So, akong gitawag nga. Tawag is to call. Home. Home is Pinoy Anan. House is Balay. Home is Pinoy Anan. So let's see the translation. Um, asa nga dalan ako mopadulong or mopadung. Kung ako moliko sa wala, ug mopataas sa bungtod. Mismo sa taliwala, mao ang akong paraiso, ang lugar nga akong gitawag nga Pinoy Anan. So, this is like the close literal translation of the phrase above. However, you know, if you want to really convey a clearer um, translation of the phrase, so this would be how it will be translated to. Asa ko mo paingon. So, mo paingon. It's the same as mo padulong. You know, you you can try, you can basically interchange these two words. Um, if you notice, I didn't specify dalan or the way, so it's like a shortened um, translation. Asa ko mo paingon. Asa ko mo paingon, however, is you know a phrase that you can use um, to ask anyone if you want to find out which way you're going to. If you don't know directions, so you can just say, Asa ko mo paingon? Which way should I go? Where will I go? Kun ako muliko padulong sa wala or padung, you know, you can just say padung instead of padulong. Kun ako muliko padung sa wala, Ugmo kat kat. So here, now you see kat kat. Meaning to say you are going to go up. To climb up. Because you are talking of bungtod, which is a hill. Sa taliwala. So right here, I, I got rid of the word mismo. I just simply go to taliwala. But then, I used another word, makaplagan. Kaplag is to find. So, I'm saying it in a different way, but I'm meaning the same um, thought. I'm conveying the same thought. Sa taliwala, akong makaplagan. Right in the middle, I will find. Ang akong paraiso. My paradise. Ang lugar... The place nga akong gitawag that I call Pinoy Anan, home. So there it is. There, that's the complete um, translation that that makes more sense. Asa ko mo paingon kung akumuli ko padulong sa wala o mukatkat sa bungtod. Sa taliwala, akong makaplagan ang akong paraiso, ang lugar nga akong gitawag nga Pinoy Anan. So that ends um, this session. I hope uh, you learned another new um, set of words in Cebuano and in Visayan. And... Um, Again, I'm reminding you, if you like this video, um, please make sure that you 
click on the like button as well as you know subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed yet and um, finally we also have um, books for your references um, we have Bisdak learn to speak Cebuano overnight a no frills approach to learning Cebuano and or Visayan dialect so um thank you for spending your time with this tutorial and i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next lesson daghang salamat